Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being here with us today. Uh, my name is Sergeant Landon Groger, uh, the Public Affairs uh, Officer here for West Baton Rouge Parish. Uh, we're here today to discuss an operation that involved multiple parishes in the southern region here in Louisiana. This involves uh, several dealerships, several law enforcement agencies, and the partnership with all these agencies. Um, I'm going to begin by listing the agencies that are involved to try to give you the, uh, the outline of this investigation. Uh, West Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office, the Louisiana State Police, Union Pacific Railroad Police, East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office, the Denham Springs Police Department, Lafayette Police Department, New Orleans Police Department, Miami Beach Police Department, Thibodeau Police Department, and Louisiana Probation and Parole. The dealership locations throughout the southern region include Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, Slidell, Metairie, Lafayette, and Harvey. This investigation began last year in March of 2023 and ultimately ended with the arrest here uh, last week, March of 2024. This was a multi-jurisdictional investigation uh, into high-valued Dodge vehicles, which included TRX trucks, Hellcats, and Scat Pack Edition chargers. This involved multiple suspects breaking into the Union Pacific Automotive Facility located here in Port Allen. This location services the southern region of, for Dodge vehicles, including the high-value models uh, that are waiting the transportation to the dealerships. These vehicles are brought in via rail and offloaded into a secure lot. A part of this process and prior to this incident, key fobs were left inside of the vehicles. However, this process has since changed. March 26 of 2023. The investigation started with the theft of two Ram 1500 TRX Hellcats and a theft, an attempted theft of a GMC pickup truck. This particular truck was used to crash through the rear gate of the train entrance of this particular facility. The suspects were able to leave with two Hellcats, which were both recovered, one in Miami Beach, Florida, and one in Jefferson Parish. Arrests were made in both of these. March 29th, 2023, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office made an arrest on a Keelan McGee and recovered one of the previously mentioned vehicles, which was the TRX truck. My, on April 5th of last year, Miami Beach recovered the second vehicle and made an arrest later that day on a Dion Roberts. Miami Beach responded to a disturbance with a girlfriend advised law enforcement that this this particular vehicle was stolen and that's how they arrived in Miami from, uh, with this vehicle. The vehicle was impounded by Miami, uh, Miami Beach Police Department and the suspect later attempted to get this vehicle out of impound with uh, counterfeit documents. July 27th of 2023, a Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat was stolen from a Denham Springs dealership. Investigations were led by the Denham Springs Police Department. The vehicle was later recovered approximately 12 hours later in New Orleans and recovered by NOPD. No arrests were made at this time in the incident, but as a result of the investigation, detectives learned that only one key fob was delivered to this particular dealership. At this time, our detectives learned that, in, that on July 23rd, an incident took place at the Port Island Auto Facility. During inventory of this vehicle in New Orleans, investigators got an alert that there was an Apple AirTag inside of this vehicle. The AirTag was recovered. Search warrant identified that the AirTag belonged to a Keylon McGee and who had registered the device. <clears throat> Additionally, video surveillance was available and obtained that showed three suspects grinding on the rear gate of this facility and uh, also used an older model vehicle that was within the facility to attempt to break through the gates by attaching chains to this truck. Continuing in the month of July of 2023, the Louisiana State Police was notified about an air tag located in a vehicle at a dealership in Slidell, Louisiana, and also in Metairie. 
Additionally, suspects arrived at the Metairie dealership later that day and asked to see this particular vehicle that the AirTag was in. Now keep in mind, the AirTag had already been notified and removed. July 27, 2023, the vehicle was purchased in Harvey. However, on August 23, 2023, the owner was alerted that an AirTag was in this vehicle. The AirTag was recovered by the Jeff Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. All four of these air tags and the July incidents were connected to a Keylon McGee. During this time, Union Pacific Railroad Police provided a list of vehicles that were missing key fobs. Additionally, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office was alerted to the name of Keylon McGee as he was a prior suspect due to his a previous arrest that occurred on March 29th of 23 when he was in possession of that stolen TRX Hellcat. December 3rd, 2023. Our agency was notified by security at the Port Island Auto Facility stating that two subjects had entered the rear gate where a new vehicle within the lot had been occupied by suspects and that they currently were stuck on the railroad tracks. It is suspected that the suspects were attempting to steal the vehicle but were, very, uh, but were unsuccessful. During this phase of the investigation, at least 12 key fobs were reported stolen. Uh, they were, I'm sorry, they were reported stolen uh, and missing by the dealerships, along with current vehicles located at the, uh, the auto facility. Additionally, four air tags were located inside vehicles, one of those being here in Port Allen that had not yet been shipped out. That particular air tag was registered to a Dion Roberts and uh, the other air tag was located at the dealership in Denham Springs. Louisiana State Police were notified of two additional air tags and vehicles in Slide L. One was, found, one was found at a dealership and one was found after it was purchased and the owner was alerted that the air tag was in the vehicle. And this particular vehicle was a Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which is a little off of what the, uh, the SRT chargers and, and the Dodge vehicles that they were going for. These two air tags that Louisiana State Police had uh, were notified about were registered to Dion Roberts. December 11th, investigation revealed that multiple suspects visited the dealership in Denham Springs and in Baton Rouge. The East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office responded to a burglary in progress where two subjects were seen walking inside the facility. Upon arrival of the uh, deputies, three subjects were seen fleeing on foot but ultimately were not apprehended that night. It's also important to note that vehicles from the Port Allen Auto Facility were recently delivered to both of these locations, the one in Denham Springs and in Baton Rouge. January 10th of this year, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office was notified by a dealership regarding missing key fobs and air tags that were located. These air tags were registered to, registered to a Shante Bradley. The following day, January 11th, Union Pacific Railroad Police inventoried vehicles and found an air tag in a vehicle that was missing a key fob. This particular key uh, air tag was registered to a Dion Roberts. January 13th, security personnel at the Port Allen Auto Facility notified our agency regarding an attempted theft of a vehicle. This vehicle attempted to run through the main security gate, causing damage to the vehicle. The suspect was unsuccessful and backs the vehicle up and the vehicle becomes disabled. The suspect ex exits the vehicle and flees on foot and was not, was not apprehended that night. Deputies did observe a vehicle in the area and our deputies were able to identify a female driver named Kelsey Smith. Ms. Kelsey Smith was also later arrested within this investigation. Just after the incident, uh, Union Pacific Railroad Police determined that three key fobs were miss missing. Additionally, an air tag was located inside of another vehicle. January 15th of this year, Lafayette Police Department began investigating a theft of a motor vehicle from a local dealership. This vehicle was tied to the Port Allen Auto Facility, and according to the inventory sheet, this vehicle was delivered with a missing key fob. 
Currently, this vehicle is still reported, uh, still missing and is stolen. It is a 2023 Dodge Charger, black and white in color. March 19th, the suspects entered the Port Allen Auto Facility where our uniform patrol deputies were notified and responded. Deputies were unable to locate suspects and our vehicles. This same night, suspects were traveling back to Je Jefferson Parish when they had a tire blowout on I-10 in, in Ascension Parish. Ashante Bradley, the girlfriend of Keelan McGee, drives to Ascension Parish to pick up the suspects. Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office was able to identify all suspects in this vehicle with an additional suspect being identified at this time as Jaquan Price. On Thursday, March 24, 21st, 2024, arrest warrants, search warrants were simultaneously executed within Jefferson Parish and Lafouche Parish, which resulted in the following. Six arrests, including the search of four residences in Jefferson Parish and one in Lafouche Parish. 19 key fobs were located. Additionally, Grinders, burglary tools, including three additional air tags were located. Two of those air tags were registered to McGee. And initial information indicates that this last air tag is registered to a Joseph Parker Jr. Additionally, as a result of the search warrants, evidence of other crimes was discovered within those jurisdictions. These local jurisdiction, jur jurisdictions are handling any additional charges. Persons arrested, it's a slew of charges. I'll touch uh, on a few of them, but at the end of this conference, I do have a list that y'all will be able to see all the charges. Um, Keelan McGee, he is a black male, 26 years of age from West Wego, Louisiana. Currently, no bond has been set. He has a, multi he has a range of charges ranging from 19 counts, theft of a motor vehicle parts, key fobs, 19 counts of attempted theft of a motor vehicle, and, a, and a, a list of, of more. Ashante Bradley, she is a black female, 22 years of age, from West Wego, Louisiana. Currently no bond has been set, and very similar charges. Joseph Parker, Jr. He is a black male, 38 years old, from Harvey, Louisiana. His bond has been set at $650,000. His charges include 19 counts of the principal theft of a motor vehicle key fobs, 19 counts the principal of tinted, attempted theft of a motor vehicle, and more. Again, y'all will be provided with these at the end. Dion Roberts, he is a black male, 24 years, 24 years of age, from Thibodeau, Louisiana. His bond has been set at $650,000. It's also uh, to be noted that Mr. Roberts was out on bond wearing an ankle monitor during these events. He also has a list of charges that would be provided. Kelsey Smith, a black female, 25 years of age. She is from Thibodeau, Louisiana. Her bond has been set at $120,000. And again, very similar charges. Jaquan Price, black male. 18 years of age, from Jefferson, Louisiana. His bond has been set at $75,000. Mr. Kenneth Stackhouse, a black male, 25 years of age, from West Wego, Louisiana. Kenneth Stackhouse is currently wanted by our agency. He has not yet been arrested. He is 5'5", 140 pounds. He is known to drive a 2019 Chevrolet Malibu with a uh, black in color with a Louisiana license plate 945GPZ. He is charged with simple burglary of a business, two counts theft of a motor vehicle, six counts principal to theft of a motor vehicle, four counts theft of a motor vehicle for the key fobs, simple criminal damage to property, 19 counts principal to attempted theft of a motor vehicle, Six counts, principal, simple burglary of a business, and obstruction of justice. 
If anyone has any information on Kenneth Stackhouse, please contact law enforcement or your local crime stoppers here in Baton Rouge. It's 225-344-STOP. That's 344-7867. I will provide a photo of him and his vehicle. This is him. And this is his vehicle here. And that is Kenneth Stackhouse, black male, 25 years of age from, from West Wego, Louisiana. I just want to, to recognize all these law enforcement agencies here today, uh, speaking with Sheriff Kaz. You know, there's a lot of things in, that the community, that the community doesn't realize goes on behind the scenes in our, in our jobs. Without the partnership with all these men and women within these agencies, there's, we wouldn't be where we are today. The networking, the community involvement, just the, the being able to reach out to each other and accomplish these goals, it sets the example for, for what we have here today. So on behalf of the Sheriff's Office, thank you. Thanks to everyone that's involved. Um, again, this is, this is a great effort um, by all these men and women, and we hope that you know moving forward, that we continue these relationships and we can continue doing what we were, we're here to do. So with that being said, I will take any questions that y'all may have. Yes, ma'am. Can you oversimplify exactly what the heist uh, involved? Like how were they stealing these? The high end, there were high end Dodge, Dodge cars, uh, like SRT, Hellcat packages. Uh, they were going into the facility. They were taking, there were multiple key fobs for each vehicle. They would take one key fob and deposit an Apple AirTag inside that vehicle. When that vehicle would leave that uh, auto facility and transit to its uh, respected dealership, they would then see it at the dealership and they would have the keys in hand and go take the vehicle. And this facility was where? This facility, facility is located here in Port Allen. It is um, LeBlanc Road and Southwest Port Drive. Miami was involved because they recovered the initial uh, when two uh, the Dodge SRT trucks were stolen. One of those suspects had driven to Miami, was involved in a disturbance, and then that's when the girlfriend had, had alerted law enforcement that this particular vehicle was stolen. And then he attempted to go get that vehicle out of impound by using a false document. So that was the initial start of the investigation was those two Ram trucks that were stolen. Moving forward, do you have any um, increased security or patrols over at the port for things like this, or maybe any advice for people, you know, when they're buying cars to look for air tags, things like that? So that particular port is uh, ran by the Union Pacific. Uh, we, we've been in contact with Union Pacific Railroad Police. Uh, they have revamped their security measures uh, to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Uh, for as the community, you know, just we always want to be aware of things, you know, not to alarm anybody, but if you get that alert, uh, contact your local law enforcement, you know, or contact the dealership. Maybe they would know something more. But uh, yes, you know, it, this whole investigation was more so from these these bad guys putting these Apple Air tags in the vehicles and ultimately had the goal to go take the car. And is this something that you guys have ever experienced before? Obviously, like you said, multiple jurisdictions all the way down to Florida. Anything like this before? Not in my career. I can't speak on behalf of everybody else, but not in my career. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the people, how did they gain access to the facility? There is a back gate to this facility that, uh, that is used for the train entrance. It is a, I don't know if it's a swing gate or rolling gate, but it is a secure gate. Um, they were able to get in there, but to get a vehicle out, they were trying to pry open, crash through. They had used a, uh, one of the new vehicles that was in the lot they had access to. It was a truck. They tried to crash through the gate. They were unsuccessful. And that's um, any 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 means that they were that they were trying to gain access into this facility. They would do. Um, did any of them work at the facility? Is that how they were able to? All that was looked into for is the security and the personnel there. Uh, detectives advised that currently there is no connection or no relationships between these suspects and the employees within this facility. How often does this happen? Well, of course, the beard, um, since 
what, 2023 and 2024, how often would you say this has been happening? This is the first one here in Port Allen. Uh, I can't speak on a, on a national level, but this is the first one that we've had here. And again, I, I just really want to recognize these men and women that are behind me because it, it's just a community involvement. It's a law enforcement involvement of networking, working together, being able to talk to one another, share you know, the investigations, uh, the information that's revealed from the investigation, and working together. So again, Sheriff Kaz and I spoke this is this is a great uh, great opportunity you know to show the public that what goes on behind the scenes in our law enforcement career you know and, and, and investigation that is this lengthy does take time you know you're looking right at a year for this but ultimately all these arrests were made we still have mr kenneth stick uh sorry stackhouse that is wanted and i just want to reassure the public that you know we're as a as a law enforcement officer we're here to help you know, and again, the community involvement and, and just an everyday general life. If you see something, say something, call us, work with us. We'll work with you. And we try to try to just do what we can to make a, a safer community. Thank you. Thank you. One, real quick, one thing I, I would like to add is uh, this wouldn't be possible without uh, our 18th Judicial District District Attorney's Office. They're willing to prosecute this case in totality. So when the detectives went and briefed uh, DA uh, Clayton, he, uh, without hesitation, took this case upon. So we would not be here today without the cooperation of the district attorney's office. Lastly, I would uh, be remiss if I wouldn't tell y'all the tenacity that these detectives displayed during this investigation. A lot of people think that our law enforcement databases, our case management systems, talk to each other. They don't. Okay, so when one crime occurs in one jurisdiction, we may not know about it in another jurisdiction. But these detectives picked up the phone and reached out and called each other. They reached out and called each other. And by reaching out and going above and beyond, they was able to bring this, this ring of car thieves to justice. Okay? I cannot speak enough of the tenacity of these detectives. They did a phenomenal job and we're very proud of them. And that's for all of the agencies. So thank you. Can you spell your name? Deval, D-E-V-A-L-L. -L. I'm the Chief of Staff for the West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to end on one last statement that's unrelated to this press conference. Um, it is in relation to the commitment we made to the community back in September when we had our high school shooting. Since the homicide in September of last year, that occurred at our local school, an organized crime task force was created. And through collaborated efforts with local law enforcement agencies, including Port Allen, Brutally, Addis, and the Iberville Parish Sheriff's Office, 34 arrests have been made, eight firearms recovered, two, two of which were, were reported stolen, and one was connected to two homicides. Charges range from obstruction, disturbing the peace, possession of stolen things, public intimidation, inciting a felony. You know, we're, we're just pleased to announce that the juvenile crime has decreased, you know, and without the community's invo involvement and our, the law enforcement working together to focus on these juvenile crimes, I don't think that we would be where we are today. So on behalf of the community involvement, thank you very much. I just wanted to uh, present y'all with these facts of the juvenile related uh, crimes that we've been having. Thank y'all. Thank you. <clears throat>